some new developments on the whole Brexit British EU relations, which I found fascinating. And to be honest, is something that I think we might have some, you know, some new way of looking at. Uh, so you ha- last week, basically, British government announced that B- Boris Johnson's government, the Tory government, they announced they're going to uh, put forward the legislation. I, th- I forget there were leaks first or they announced it. But at any rate, it came out that they are going to uh, put a legislation in that would uh, cause changes to the to the law in a way that is not in line with the withdrawal agreement that they have with the EU. The withdrawal agreement that was signed less than 12 months ago by this government and which was taunted by this government as a great deal, so to speak. So they're gonna, basically they are changing the withdrawal agreement through internal legislation and the bill the legislation is also called the Internal Market uh, Act, I believe, or bill or whatever. So they are trying to basically amend the withdrawal agreement uh, using internal legislation. Their argument is was, was, not uh, is actually, because the government's argument has changed in less than a week. Their original argument was that, no, we are not breaking international law. Because EU said they're basically uh, breaking international law by, uh, by uh, uh, through, you know, it's like you, it's like you are signed up to a treaty and then you introduce the legislation that contradicts that treaty. So you're breaking international law. That's what the EU claimed, right? Britain is saying, no, we are not breaking international law. We are exploiting on clarities within the arg- within the treaty, like there are gray areas, we are legislating to protect. That was his, Boris Johnson's original argument. We are legislating to protect British businesses uh, and provide uh, estate funding for bus- for sectors that uh, might be in danger. Right. That was their argument. But EU said, well, no, you're breaking international, you had a treaty with us and you're breaking it. And uh, basically, yeah, everybody went crazy, including some of the backbenchers of the government, including the former prime minister, Theresa May. And a lot of people have come out and said, yeah, this is not just, uh, I mean, put, let us put aside that whether this act is a good act or a bad act, this undermines trust and, uh, you know, trust and, uh, you know, British, uh, British position in international politics. Nobody will trust us anymore. EU has threatened legal action. And uh, it's fascinating. It's another case of Boris Johnson, in my view, uh, basically throwing a wrench into the whole thing and causing a whole, a whole, lot of problems. He's been criticized for breaking international law, for undermining confidence in uh, Britain, uh, and basically uh, being a hypocrite, like, not a hypocrite, flip-flopper, because there are so many videos of him saying, this is a great deal, this is a great deal, and now he's saying, well, not that great. But, oh, the perhaps the most fascinating part of this whole ordeal was I forget if it was in House of Lords or House of Commons, but one of the members asked the member representing the government that, uh, please explain this to us. And are you saying, are are you assuring us you're not breaking international law? And then the government representative said, no, actually we are in a very limited, and in a very limited and controlled way, we are breaking international law. This is very commonly done by us and any other, many other nations when it is in line with national interest or, evolve, I, I forget the details, but yeah, we basic, they did basically say, yeah, we are breaking international law. And that's where like, pretty much everybody is criticizing Boris Johnson for this on the... The only thing that are the only people who are happy are hardcore Brexiteers, because they they never liked the withdrawal agreement, and I they hope this will cause a 
harder Brexit than what or already imagined. But I must say, I mean, even I am a bit because uh, I was following the EU negotiations with Britain and maybe I am very cynical, but I see the same trend in the EU negotiations with Greece, with Britain, with their behavior towards Russia. They're, they they constantly leak shit to newspapers uh, that oh us is the uk is not being cooperative us is not uk is not being clear uk is uh, doing that uk is their their strategy is always leak 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 one sided leaks and then present ourselves as this above the fray oh we are just doing love oh we are eu we are professionals we don't you know support crazy people like Trump. We only, you know, supported Berlusconi for 20 years, that, you know, child molesting son of a bitch. So, you know, we're good guys. I, I, they are such hypocrites. And they, they were doing the same again with Britain. And I'm sorry, but it's international politics. This is not like a legal dispute between two neighbors in London. And I don't know, Guardian, when you read Guardian and BBC and these people come and say, the trust in Britain. I'm sorry, but nobody trusts Britain. Nobody ever trusted Britain. The idea that people around the world were saying, oh, you know, the British, if they sign something, you can count. What are you talking about? Britain is, like, if Britain is largely in people's view. I'm not saying this is good or correct, but the general view of British is these, you know, fox people. <laughs> who are the most conniving Machiavellian people in the world. And what, now everybody owes the trust in British government? What are you talking about? Uh, so I don't understand that argument. And a lot of people are saying that Boris is doing this as a way of, you know, this is a way of changing the media narrative and getting more from the EU in the final deal that they come up with. Uh, so I think in a way, good on him. Well done to him. I'll, 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 I have to look into the specific details of the act to give a genuine judgment. But as a political maneuver and tactic, fair enough. Good for him, in my view. And if you are representing a group of people or a nation, that's how you should act. You shouldn't uh, even... Uh, in, I wish left did more of that. I wish left did more of lying and then uh, doing something else. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not joking even. I genuinely mean it. Like sometimes, especially in dealing with foreign powers, you should say something and then you should do other things. That's, that's always been the case. Uh, so I don't understand what's the big deal or, yeah, what's it? But I do realize I'm a cynical son of a bitch as well. So hopefully you have a more nuanced take on it. Maybe, I don't know, help me out here. <laughs> no, I think that was a very good breakdown. And so I think the last part you answered the question that I had, which was why would, uh, why would Boris Johnson be doing that right now? So you think is to hopefully get more from out of the, um, out of the deal. Yeah. I, I think it's probably to get more out of the deal and to change because he's been under law, especially after they, he's co in the beginning of the COVID, he, his policies were popular. Since then, he not so much. And he's been under attack from his own party as well, whom uh, they've, they've been finding his chancellor a, a, an attractive option as well, because a lot of the good response from, for COVID has been attributed to him because in UK is very UK is a very strange situation where you have prime minister, but chancellor is almost equally as powerful as prime minister. So I think it's partially a media like sort of tactic to get his Brexit supporters a bit more. You know, oh, this is our Boris. Oh, uh, an angle I forgot to mention was the Irish border angle. The Good Friday Agreement is based on. Yeah, I was going to say from my um, very following this story superficially, I thought that was at the heart of it. Uh, that's because that's, that's at the heart of the US-UK relation. Uh, uh, 
issue because Good Friday Agreement, which ensures peace and freedom of movement between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, is based on EU treaties. This withdrawal agreement legally addressed that. The internal market may lead to a uh, I, to be honest, I've been reading on, into this. I don't understand all the legalities of it, so I probably make mistakes. But there may be a hard border uh, in the in Ireland as a that's result. What the Europeans want, right? No, no, that's that. No, everybody says they don't want that. Everybody says oh, they don't. Want I thought that. I thought the British didn't want the hard border. But I thought the Europeans wanted the hard border. No, nobody wants the hard border because, they, okay. by the way, the hard border. I am pretty. I am not hundred. I'm not sure at all about this. But I think even in that scenario, when we are talking about a hard border, it will be for goods, not for people. Right? Nobody says they want the border because if you introduce the border, there is a good chance that the radical groups in North Catholics. Uh, and probably in the south, uh, restart their activities again. That's that's the fear. The fee, the peace they describe as fragile. I am not sure. A lot of people are raising this criticism that how fragile the peace actually is, and will we actually see radical groups like in 1970s bombing places? Seems. In, like it doesn't seem something you can imagine right now, but it's definitely possible. So nobody wants the border, but because of the legal situation, it may be, become inevitable. Like when you have a legal situation where foreign goods in the UK must be inspected, blah, 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 you know? So it may become, it's a inevitability that everybody says they are trying to avoid. I think, to be honest, it's a political issue that Europe is use, uses to, um, you know, uses to sort of twist the knife into Britain because of Brexit. I think that they that's the EU's view. At the same time, I think British government doesn't care as much as the Irish government because Irish government was very angry about this issue, and. Uh, oh, that's where why you thought that was the you know that's why you thought it was the biggest probably issue because um, some people say that you uh, <clears throat> some people say that uh, U.S. has de- told U.K. you you must come out of the customs union to have a deal with U.S. Customs union is the is a part of the EU. Some countries choose not to be part of the political EU. They, ju- they are just part of the custom union, which basically means there are no tariffs, right? And in the withdrawal agreement, Northern Ireland remained in the customs union, right? So you, another motivation for- Before it was in the custom union only, right? Or huh? before Brexit started? In Britain? Yeah. No, no, Britain was in the EU. It was in the EU, okay. But I mean, what's the difference? How come they, they didn't adopt the euros? They, there was an option with euro, you could opt out. And then they and then marked it. So UK, until like a few years ago, was, for instance, equally as part of the EU as France is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, okay. I would agree with you. It wasn't as integrated because of the euro and because of uh, other issue like there are no for example there are no major european institution in the uk Mm. you know so you could argue they weren't as integrated but as a member they were legally an equal member Uh, and yeah yeah. so another motivation for boris johnson or tories as a whole to do this is to take northern ireland out of custom union to be able to have a deal with the u.s faster and easier Ireland, Irish, um, famously, they have a, a strong lobby in uh, uh, in America, bipartisan lobby in Republican, because a significant number of Americans come from Irish backgrounds, right? And uh, America played a big role in the uh, during the Irish-British wars and all that. So, uh, 
At the same time, you had the Democrats come out. I'm, I think this is more aimed at Trump. This is aimed at attacking Trump's administration for, you know, because Trump administration said you must take Northern Ireland out of the <clears throat> customs union. So Nancy Pelosi came out, gave a, a speech saying, I was informed in the middle of the night that Britain is uh, just turning its back on the Good Friday Agreement. Why? Why are they? By the way, I'm in the end, I haven't looked into the minutia and the details. So maybe I agree with people that in this, this is a bad bill. This is a damaging bill. But the way they present shit, you can, it's just, they make it like it's a soap opera, like, you know, like a Turkish soap opera. And uh, yeah, it, it's just, uh, yeah. Oh, why did they do that? Why? Because they're politicians. What, what the fuck do you think? Like, because they're trying to survive in this one. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, so uh, you, again, th that's how American politics connects to this. It's a very complicated issue and uh, a very interesting one. But I, I yeah, th my, my hot take of it though is, I really admire Boris Johnson's way of challenging the EU. Like, you know, he just doesn't back down in their high-minded, their self-righteous attitude. I love that. I love that. Right. Like, yeah, we're going to break the international law. And, you know, what you're going to do about it, dear? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice hot take. But, yeah, so... Let's say, I mean, there's about... There's, what, how much time is there left for there to actually be a for the divorce to happen between the EU and UK about a year, right? I think, uh, yeah, yes, I think so, yeah. Uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, Boris Johnson gave a deadline. Fifth. He said, if until 15 of October, this October, there is no deal or uh, like at least, I guess, a you know, sort of a placeholder deal, uh, he'll end things and uh, he thinks, you know, uh, then, uh, that's it. So 15th of October. I see. And again, that's, this was before this, I think, whole internal market. Very, I respect that. You should show that you're willing to walk away from the table because the EU is ju it's just, again, if, if this was the original case, maybe I give you more leverage, but sorry, more uh, lenient. Uh, I, I be more lenient on, you. But I've seen the same thing with the Greeks. I've seen the same thing in the way they, uh, you know, uh, they way uh, they treat Russians. Uh, they just you see that the way they treat Trump, uh, Iran, everywhere. You know, this is they they just just they're so self fucking righteous. I guess they're so self righteous. I hate that they think they're better and more. Uh, sophisticated and more educated and uh, oh that Boris Johnson you know that oh that un even though Boris is a posh douchebag in many ways but you know I like that about him he doesn't back now and I mean he didn't create this gigantic mess that the that the UK is in right now and I mean just the saddest thing over this whole Brexit is that it all happened with complete bullshit arguments from both sides and now they're here. Yeah, I agree. I think my, my, in my view, the saddest thing about Brexit is the level of importance. It is generally not as important for the UK as they're making it out to be. You I mean, know? I think, I think, I mean, I think it kind of has to do with what I've been thinking this whole time is that, you know, it has nothing to do with whether you're part of the EU in a way, or if you're not part of the EU, it's what you do, what, what the other policies that you do. So, the UK removing itself from the EU is neither good or bad for the population. It depends what policies they replace it with and what deals they can replace it. So it just I, I depends what happens under either of these scenarios. Yeah, but I, I would add two caveats. One is that you can see from the people behind the movement, you can see what policies they want to put forward as well. So it is true that the people behind the Brexit were right, largely, not, not everybody, were right-wing, uh, somewhat xenophobic, perhaps racist people. Uh, and, and 
I do think UK, because they never gave, as you mentioned, actually, they never adopted Europe. That, that's very crucial. That means they never lost the control over uh, their own money. They, they, you know, this is Greeks were in a far worse position uh, than, you know, uh, British. If you have lost uh, basically control of your own monetary policy, your own fiscal policy, largely, I don't know what can you do, you know? So UK uh, was not like, it's far, difficult, far more difficult for a government of a Spain to do the same than it is for the UK because UK had its own fiscal and monetary independence. You know, mm -hmm. for others, it may not be as easy as what policies you choose. Yeah, and even other kind of control. So for instance, they're not even part of the Schengen. So, you know, Europeans going to the UK, they get their passports checked and everything, so. But you have countries like Switzerland, which was not and is not part of EU, but is part of Schengen. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Switzerland has, I mean, absolutely no choice given its borders with France and Italy and just the circulation of people going on between these countries. The land locked, yeah. It doesn't yeah. have access to sea, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, for instance, in, in Geneva, a lot of people live in France and they work in Geneva because the borders within five, some of the borders are within five to 10 minutes away from the city. And you're suddenly in rural France, which is much cheaper <laughs> than Switzerland, you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, but it's good to hear about the UK and the EU. I kind of missed it, you know, with coronavirus and everything, Brexit was put away for a bit, but now it's back. Let's see. I like when it's this kind of, yeah, I like it when it's kind of, I don't like it when it's just a scaremongering. If after, it's been predicted after leaving EU, you know, uh, uh, half of British workers will commit suicide. Or something. Like, <laughs> it's just, come on, just chill out. <laughs>